darling heart and welcome to the Drink Less, Live Better podcast. This is the podcast that helps you to see that drinking less doesn't need to be stressful, lonely or boring. I'm your host, Sarah Williamson, and I decided to have a year alcohol free as a little life experiment and haven't looked back. With my experience and training, I now help other women with their alcohol free and drink less adventures. I'm here to tell you that you can be truly joyful without alcohol in your life. Join me here each week to find out how. Today, I'd like to tell you a story about Christmas. A story that isn't the one with Father Christmas, elves, Scrooge, reindeers, snowmen, or the sweet baby Jesus, or any other character we all know. It's the one where you feature in the central role. Now, if you're anything like me, there's an old story running in the back of your mind about Christmas. Mine features mulled wine at Christmas fairs, red wine by open fires, sparkly G&Ts on nights out, cocktails with the girls, Prosecco whilst wrapping presents or cooking Christmas lunch, and more. Of course, there are the corresponding feelings of low-level anxiety, brain fog and horrific hangovers, but they are always glossed over when I'm reminiscing about Christmas past. Now I have a present or future me Christmas story, which is all about loving the atmosphere and company when I'm with friends, hot chocolates shared with my kids, enjoying the cooking experiences and not giving myself anything to get stressed about that I then don't need to unwind from. There are beautiful adverts for alcohol everywhere this time of year. Beautiful people drinking beautiful drinks. Of course, we never see the morning after pics or the midnight pics or indeed the 10pm pics, just the pretend start of the evening ones. A small side note here. I went out clubbing last weekend. I know, I still got it at 43, thanks very much. And I took a selfie on the way out and when I got back home. And there is very little difference in how I look. I compare that to past me getting in from a night out and think what a wreck I used to look. No judgment on past me, just an observation on what an alcoholic night out looked like. Anyway, Where was I? Ah yes, there is so much advertising of alcohol at this time of year and I never realised how much until I stopped drinking. It is everywhere. Is it because we cannot possibly enjoy our time out with colleagues, friends and family unless we have a drink? That can't be the reason, surely. Well, what should we do when we get that invitation to a Christmas party? Let's break it down into the six most important steps. Number one, decide. Do I want to go? Is this night out with people I'd choose to spend a night out with? Do they fill my heart with joy? If it wasn't Christmas, would I feel obliged to go? If you answered no to any of these questions, I'd suggest politely declining the invitation in the first place. If you find yourself in a position where you've accepted but are now thinking you'd rather not go, well, then don't. Either give advance notice that you won't be able to go or send a message excusing yourself on the evening. You don't owe anyone an elaborate excuse or explanation. Just keep it simple. Number two, prepare yourself by having a short simple and non-explainy reason why you're ordering lime and soda, ginger beer, sparkling water, alcohol-free gin and tonic or whatever, if anyone asks you, which they might not. I'm driving, I've got a fitness class at 6am tomorrow, whatever feels most comfortable. I've had my fair share of telling little white lies such as I'm on antibiotics just to get people to leave me alone. But do remember, it's none of anyone else's business why you are choosing not to have a drink. Number three, go with your decision firmly made. I'm not drinking tonight is a better mantra to go out with than I'll make a decision when I get there. Number four, plan what you will drink in advance. Do you know the venue? Do you know what they serve? And do you know what you'd like to drink? Call them so that you're prepared. If there's something you'd particularly like, ask them to get it in for you. Number five, have an escape plan. 
Know that when you've had enough, you are free to go home. Number six, have fun. Know this more than anything else. Go out knowing that if you're out with people you love, alcohol makes no difference to the good time that you can have and only adds to the joy of the Christmas period by alleviating you of any rough feelings the next day. Any shame, guilt or anxiety and knowing that your family will get the best from you in the run-up till Christmas. This is my third sober Christmas, so these tips feel normal to me now. I'm really well practiced at saying no to what I don't want in my diary in the first place and you can perfect perfect the art of this too. Drop me a DM on Insta or on Facebook if you'd like details of my December coaching programme. There's still time for us to work together this month. Thank you for listening into this episode and please listen in again next time. Thank you and P.S. I believe in you. Thank you.